Distinguished guests, controller, Hegar, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcoming, welcome to the opening of the 31st World LPG Forum here in the fantastic city of Houston. For those of you who don't know me, I'm James Rockwell. I'm the CEO of the World LPG Association, and I'm going to run you through this, uh, this opening session. I have a few little housekeeping uh, announcements to make. Firstly, if the fire alarm goes off, the message is to stay put. Okay? So, no, stay put. Somebody will come within a minute to guide you through the exits. Okay? If they don't come within a minute, then I suggest that you get up and leave. Please switch off your cell phones or put them onto silent. So, um, <laughs> how appropriate indeed. So, if you could do that, that would <laughs> we would appreciate that. The last thing I want to say um, in terms of housekeeping is we have a wireless um, network here, and the password, all in capitals, is Houston 2018. I'd like to thank, before I get going, I'd like to thank all the supporters of this event, uh, without whom, of course, it wouldn't have been successful. Our sponsors, particularly those at platinum level, so we have Dorian LPG, Feral Gas, Targa Resources, SHV Energy, Perk, and UGI Amerigas. Of course, I want to thank also our exhibitors, our speakers, and of course, you, the delegates. It's the fifth time that the World LPG Forum has been held in the United States. And that's a record for any country. We've only been maximum uh, twice in any other country in the world. And, uh, you know, why do we come back to the States so much? Well, clearly, apart from being a, a wonderful place, wonderful people, incredible country, the USA is now the number one exporter of propane in the world. But it's also home to a lot of innovation and a lot of business opportunities. We first came to the US in San Francisco in 1988. It was the first World Forum that we ever had. Since that time, production of propane in the US has just about doubled. As I said, you're now the world's biggest exporter. But at the same time, US domestic demand has been, I would say, rather flat during that period. I strongly believe, and I think you're gonna get that during today and tomorrow, um, that the opportunity for increased propane consumption in the US is here right now. And I want to tell you why. We meet this year at a time when global energy is undergoing a period of significant transition. Facing complicated challenges ahead, policymakers and industry are having to start making decisions over what the future of energy will look like, how air quality and climate change targets can be met whilst ensuring that an incredibly rich and diverse tapestry of energy needs are also met. Recent progress on electrification of some energy needs has provided a sort of comfort blanket to policymakers and to the public that our future could be an electric one. Now, obviously, electrification of everything is neither a feasible choice nor the right economic one. We need practical, pragmatic solutions that allow a real shift in decarbonization and improved air quality without compromising our economic growth, our future prosperity, or the health of next generations. And in this context, the role of LPG or propane is hugely important. Mature markets such as the US, propane offers great solutions as a cleaner alternative to high carbon fossil fuels for heating transport, power generation, and others. And in emerging markets, LPG fundamentally improves quality of life, for instance, by serving as a clean alternative to hazardous traditional fuels such as wood or coal. The other thing is the role of LPG is not time limited. The LPG supply chain is, is bursting with innovation. It makes, this, it makes investment in this industry a long-term strategic choice, not an interim compromise. Today, LPG is the best fossil fuel. And soon, a range of innovations will render the use of LPG smarter and more efficient as gas technology breakthroughs available on the grid become available off the grid as well. I want to make something abundantly clear if I haven't done so already. LPG, or propane, is a fantastic source of energy. 
It is a dramatically underused source of energy, and in fact, it can be seen as perhaps the greatest untapped source of clean energy in the world today. Now, during the coming two days and beyond, we're going to see how our industry can rise to the energy challenges we face. And together with policymakers in the industry, we're going to develop improved policy mechanisms and business models that will ensure that LPG takes its deserved place in tomorrow's energy mix, starting today. I would like now to introduce the first of our opening speakers, and that is Chris Earhart. Now, Chris is the current chairman of the National Propane Gas Association. He grew up in his family's propane business, and he served as its president since his father's death in 1991. He served as a director and officer in the Virginia Propane Gas Association and a state director of NPGA from 98 until he joined the officer team in 2015. Chris and his wife, Becky, live on a small farm near Verona, uh, Virginia, and they have two adult children and a six-week-old grandson. Chris. Good morning. Uh, as James said, my name is Chris Earhart. I'm a propane marketer, a small one, in a rural area about two hours from Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. And I'm currently chairman of the National Propane Gas Association. And on behalf of everyone in the United States in the propane industry, I want to welcome you to the United States and to Houston for this 31st World LP Gas Forum. Houston is the fourth largest city in the United States and home to many industries, including energy and aerospace. The combination of energy expertise and space exploration cre creates an atmosphere for the future and is a fitting backdrop for this, year, this year's forum with its theme, Tomorrow's Energy Today. Our family's company <clears throat> has marketed propane for over 70 years, and I've been part of it for 41 of those. During that time, I've seen our industry change dramatically. Over the last four months, I've had the opportunity to visit with marketers across the United States, and it's been exciting to see how propane is marketed differently just across our country and the new ideas it brings. It's exciting to see this week at the World LP Gas Forum the global influence on the propane industry and and how we can improve our industry ourselves in the United States. Conversely, it's equally exciting to see how the propane industry in our country can influence the world. Propane adds value to people's lives every day to us here in the United States and all across the world. No different today than 100 years ago when it was first discovered. Whether it cooks your food, heats your water or your home, or powers your vehicles or your factories, Propane can be the clean, abundant energy source for years into the future. Today's cutting edge technology makes propane even more versatile. The opportunities in the future are, are endless. I hope that you will enjoy your time here in Houston and at the forum. We are honored to have you here and thank you for allowing me to be here today. Thank you. Now, the event this year, um, hosted by the World LPG Association, is also done together with the Ibero-American Association. That's the Association of Latin America and, and the Spanish Peninsula. And we're delighted to have the, uh, the, 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 uh, the president of the Latin American Association here with us, Ricardo. He's a lawyer with over 30 years of experience in the LPG biz distribution market, working for Supergas Brass. It's a company of the SHV Energy Group. SHV is the world leader in energy in LPG distribution. He's a postgrad in civil law and civil procedure with a specialization in uh, regulatory and administrative law. He's the legal director of the Brazilian Association of LPG, Sindigas, and is currently the president of the AIGLP, Ricardo Tonieto.
<clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. First, everyone be welcome to the 31st World LPG Forum, tomorrow's Energy Today. It's a great pleasure and honor to participate in the opening of this forum, which takes place in the city of Houston, world's capital of oil. It's even better to have the opportunity to hold this event together with World LPG Association and National Propane Gas Association. My thanks to Mr. Pedro Jorge Filho and Mr. Chris Hirt, respectfully President and Treasurer of the World Association and National Propane Gas Association. I'm sure that together with Ibero Latin American LPG Association, which I have the honor to preside, we shall hold the biggest and best event of all times in the LPG industry. Ibero Latin American LPG Association, currently with its 33 years of existence, represents more than 60, 60 companies from 15 different countries, we, where we are always seek to spread the best practice of the LPG industry, and in this sense, I have no doubt in saying that we will have, in the coming days, the opportunity to get to know each other better and deepen our knowledge in the LPG industry. The relevant topics that will be addressed today and tomorrow, as well as the quality of the presenters and debaters, certainly qualify the event that we are proud to have built together. In parallel, I cannot fail to highlight and thank also the exhibitors who participate in this event and bring new technologies and applications to our industry. It's a unique moment to visit our suppliers as well as networking. And I encourage everyone to visit the stands and to know what they have brought to show us. The city of Houston does not require introductions. It is part of our almost daily vocabulary, being a key milestone in the international LPG supply map. And it becomes, day by day, a more and more mandatory route both to the growing demand market in Asia, where China and India stand out, and to the entire Latin American market. It's like feeling at home. In the coming days, we will be gathered here, exchange experiences, and discussing with leaders and experts of most varied subjects, certainly learning more than teaching. I have no doubt when I say that the role of LPG will remain relevant in Latin America. This type of energy is simply exceptional, since it is transportable, versatile, modern in face of the varied applications, and especially in face of the high heat power and great yield with low environmental impact. In addition, I would like to point out that we will have the opportunity to know the different stages of LPG market in the world. From the more sedimented markets, where the use of LPG is focused on industries, commerce, agribusiness, and auto gas, going through the North American experience with its grandeurs in every sense, from the area of exploration, production, storage, and distribution. And last but not least, the markets that are still growing and are opportunities for everyone, such as China and India, which I have mentioned previously, in Latin America countries, where we still have an energy matrix that favor the use of LPG cooking food, for cooking food, and with the large use of transportable cylinders. Particularly in relation to the Latin American markets, I would like to draw your attention to the changes we are undergoing. We are in many countries due to legal reforms or economic needs, leaving the model of a monopolist agent that is responsible for the entire primary supply chain to a new model where new private agents will occupy the space that belongs to the monopoly companies. Mexico is a clear example of this transformation, and other countries like Brazil, Peru, and Colombia are experiencing rapid changes as well. Given this transformation in primary supply, we are organizing today a working lunch parallel to the main event, which aims at discussing the opportunities and how Latin American countries can make this transition 
without a system-wide rupture. I would like to invite everyone to participate in this meeting. Please sit back, join us, get, and get to know this exciting journey and experience, full of opportunities and little details like everything in Latin America. Finally, I thank all the sponsors and in particular, particular those who make up the Ibero Latin American LPG Association Council since they believe and made possible the support of the performance of this forum. And I would like to invite everyone to visit our website and see details of our third, fourth Congress, which will be held from March 20th to 22nd next year in the incredible city of Lima in Peru. I hope to see you all there. Thank you very much. I'd like to now introduce um, Mr. Pedro Jorge Filho. Mr. Jorge has been Chief Executive Officer of Ultragas in Brazil, a wholly owned subsidiary of Ultrapar. Mr. Jorge is an officer at Sindigas, the National Brazilian Association, and at the AIGLP, the Association, uh, the Ibero-American Association. He's also president of the World LPG Association, based in Paris. He holds a certificate from NCAD, from Fontainebleau in France. He also holds a, a degree from the Institute IESE in the University of Nevada in Barcelona, in Spain. And he has a degree in industrial and chemical engineering from McKenzie University. Mr. Jorge, please. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to begin proceeding and to welcome all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, to the wonderful city of Houston for the third first World LPG Forum meeting under the theme Tomorrow's Energy Today. This is the fifth time we have held the World LPG Forum in the US. But it is our first time in Texas at what is arguably the epicenter of our industry. The first time we held our fall in the US was back in 1988, when we held the inaugural World Forum in San Francisco. But much has changed since then. When we gathered in California 30 years ago, the world was a very different place. Ronald Wilson Reagan was president. The Soviet Union still existed. And Tim Berners-Lee started to talk about his idea to create an internet. In some period, a new opening in the political scenario was born in my country, Brazil. After 25 years of military dictatorship, we were able to welcome the democracy. In our industry, was also very different. In the last 30 years, global consumption has more than doubled. U.S. production has increased by 70%, and market segments such as autogas, have grown to become a major element of the global energy mix. The U.S. has now become the world's largest exporter of LPG, and Texas and the Gulf of Mexico can be considered the center of gravity of our LPG industry. With the expansion of the Panama Canal, the U.S. is really a strategic hub for the industry, being able to supply its domestic market Central and South America, but also a growing and dynamic Asian market. This forum, my friends, occurs at a very interesting time. Through 2017 18, 
The LPG industry has demonstrated continued robust growth, and for the first time in history, both production and consumption have passed the 300 million tons per year mark. Much of the production has come from the US, where stern growth has grabbed the headlines over recent years. Today, as US production begins to plateau, other countries are now posting equally strong growth. Chinese and Indian refinery production is high, and we expect production to be robust for many years to come. Latin America has also grown, especially Mexico, Brazil, and Argentina. While we have seen tremendous growing production in the US, much of the growth in global demand has come from Asia. In India in particular, where the government has spearheaded the largest and the most ambitious campaign ever to promote LPG for rural consumers, thus transforming and improving the lives of hundreds of millions of people. We see the growth in domestic demand continuing in India and forth in Asia as we strive toward our target of switching one billion people to cooking with LPG by 2030. One of the other emerging bright spots for consumption is the marine segment. Two years ago, WPG decided to launch a technical study into the possibility of using LPG as a proportion fuel for ships. Our marine group, working group determined that LPG had unique qualities that would enable ships to operate cost effectively with lower emissions. My friends here, so, what are our challenges now? With both production and consumption growing robustly, it's safe to say that our LPG industry is not in crisis, but is a major global player enjoying some of the best years in its history. But will this be sustained? How can we best position LPG in the future energy mix in our world that is increasingly focused on renewables. This is one of the key challenges we face as an industry and one that I hope this forum here in Houston will start to address. Our industry challenges and opportunities are shared by WLPGA. In order to meet the expectation of its members and to fulfill its role as the global voice of the LPG industry, WPJ needs to continue to strive to inform, to educate, and to influence. Now, we are in the middle of a three-year plan that has a core focus on communications and positioning LPG at the national, regional, and global levels to ensure that the industry is fairly represented and supported. At the beginning of last year, WPJ began working to support the promise application that that offer opportunities for growth. Now, in this year, WLPJ continues to be active in areas from power generation, maritime application, and auto gas. The association's tireless work ensures that new and improved technologies available to our industry at a global level, both now and especially in the future. My friends, not forgetting that we have been keeping on supporting WLPGA Cooking for Life program in several different countries. Here in our forum for this week's program, we have dynamic speakers and also chairs lined up to debate and discuss all pertinent LPG topics. The social events have been used to enhance your network and interaction as well as to give you a unique taste of US hospitality. In addition to the conference today, there is also an exhibition where you can visit a host of key companies for ever expecting of LPG business under one roof. I encourage you to spend some time seeing what is on display and catch up with the newest innovations in the LPG industry. I would like to take this opportunity and thank all of our partners here in the fair. 
The LPG industry has tremendous opportunities to contribute to a cleaner health and more prosperous world. And we are fortunate to be gathered here this week in Houston. Let's uh, all derive maximum value from our week together and ensure that what we learn to be put to good use so that wherever we operate in the world, we can continue to develop LPG tomorrow's energy today. On behalf of WLPGA, I would like to thank the Association Ibero-Americana de Gas Liquado and National Propane Gas Association that have helped us to organize this forum in Houston. And I also thank all of you for accepting our invitation and attending our forum in the wonderful city of Houston. Once again, thank our U.S. hostess and welcome to Houston. My friends and colleagues, have a nice day and a spectacular forum. Muito obrigado. Thank you, Pedro. I'm now delighted to welcome our keynote speaker this morning, uh, Glenn Hager, the Comptroller of the State of Texas. Elected in November 2014, Glenn Hager is a strong advocate for job growth and greater diversification of the Texas economy. He's a staunch supporter of government transparency, and he believes all levels of government should be open and accountable to those who pay the bills, the taxpayers. Before his Senate tenure, Hagar attended Texas A&M as an undergraduate, where he earned a Bachelor of Arts. He attended St. Mary's University, earning a Master of Arts and his law degree. And then at the University of Arkansas, he earned his Master's in Law. Glenn is a sixth generation Texan. He grew up farming land that has been in his family since the mid-1800s. Now, his upbringing taught him the core values of character, honesty, integrity, and hard work. And these are the same values that he and his wife, Dara, work to instill in their three young children, Julia, Jonah, and Claire. Glenn Hagar. Thank you for that very kind introduction. I have another speech here in a, at noon, so maybe you could go with me and introduce me there. You did such a great job. I appreciate that. Welcome to uh, my home state, Texas. Welcome to Houston, the town where I was born. So obviously, uh, Houston is has a, a very fond, special place to me. I would want to apologize, typically, for one thing. However, Without this, you would not really appreciate what Houston is, and that one thing is humidity. Normally by this time of the year, it gets a little bit cooler. We have some cool fronts. It's not very cold, but it's really great weather, but not today. So uh, we apologize, it's very hot, but typically that's what it is here in Texas and especially along the Gulf Coast. I wanted to talk a little bit about the state economy the oil and gas industry, which would bring me into the LPG, propane industry, where we see Texas, where have we been the last few years, where are we going? And as a backdrop, as, as you heard, I serve as controller of public accounts, and many people go, well, what is that? Well, as you heard, it's an elected position. I serve in the executive branch. I have roughly 3,000 employees, 26 divisions under, under my agency. But mostly we focus on three core areas. That ends up being paying the Treasury, so the $108.5 billion that goes through our state budget, whether it's our federal dollars or our state dollars, combined for that $110 billion a year budget, flows through my agency, roughly 12 million payments. I love technology, and one of the reasons for that is because if I had to sit at my desk for a 40-hour work week, and yes, I work more than 40 hours, but to put it in perspective, the 12 million payments that go through the Treasury of all the payments we have to make, I'd have to sign 96 checks every 60 seconds just to issue everything through the Treasury, and you're talking about writer's cramp. So I'm glad that we mostly are living in a modern era where we can electronically transfer those payments or whether, and yes, I will admit, I'm also here in Texas, so I want you to spend a lot of money while you're here. I'm also the tax collector. Now, 
Every time I say that, I get a little nervous in every single room because what you do not know and you did not hear in my biography or short, short introduction is that my grandfather, my mother's side, was a preacher. And so many days as a young child, I heard him talk about how in the Bible they stoned the tax collector. And little did he know, just four years ago, his grandson would be the state tax collector for the state the nation's 10th largest economy. And then also the thing that I focus on mostly, which is what I'll talk about today, is the look and the feel of where we're going in the economy. My main job constitutionally from our state's constitution is to tell our state legislature and policymakers how much money is coming to the state treasury so they can really put a budget together. Now let's go back a few years to roughly four years ago. And during four years ago, as you know, the Texas, the U.S., the world had a downturn in the oil and gas industry, had a downturn in manufacturing industry, and I highlight those two in particular because four years ago, those two industries were two of the three largest industries contributing to our state's economy. In fact, four years ago, Texas was the 12th largest economy in the world. We unfortunately lost 160,000 jobs during that time period here in Texas in just those two industries. And why is that relevant to Houston? Because during the 1980s, when we had a major downturn, Houston went in a severe economic recession, as Texas did for quite some time. However, this time, Houston had a very mild, maybe three-month recession, a very flat growth, and has rebounded. And Well, why didn't Houston have that? Houston is much more diverse, dynamic, as you heard earlier. Not only do we have the medical center, just right down the street where 80,000 people go to work at the medical center every year. MD Anderson looking and curing at all types of cancers. We have the Houston Port, which is the most busiest navigable waterway in the entire United States. NASA, all types of things that come together and Texas overall is fortunate to have a very diverse economy. In fact, where we're at today, If Houston, and don't tell everyone in Houston because I don't want them to get any idea, if this region of the state economy, which is one of 12 economic regions, if this region of Texas was not part of Texas, it in and of itself would be literally the 15th largest economy in the nation here in the United States. It would be just behind the state of Washington, a take-home pay of over $350 million. But if you go back several years ago, we had that economic downturn, yet Texas overall continued to grow. One of the things I was so curious to know, as I said earlier, we were the 12th largest economy then, but you go, well, wait, didn't you say you're the 10th largest economy today? How in the world did you go through a downturn and go from the 12th to the 10th? Well, actually, amazingly, I was very curious. I didn't think we'd be the 12th anymore. Now, I didn't imagine we would move to the 10th. And so when I looked at the economic data, trying to figure out what really happened, well, in fact, our contraction was not as large as the contraction of two other countries. And so therefore, Texas ended up moving up because it was a much more diverse economy. If you look at Texas today, our economic growth has outpaced the national average literally year after year for the last two decades. If you look at the Gulf Coast, which is where we're at today, not far from the Gulf Coast, amazing to know that tens of billions of dollars of infrastructure has gone on the ground every single year for the last decade and will continue to have tens of billions of dollars going on the ground. And why? for expansions of capacity and refinery capacity, expansion of manufacturing capacity, which is all tied back indirectly to your industry, the oil and gas industry. Just in Texas alone, along the Gulf Coast, we've had 10 facilities being built to what? Export LPG and propane. As you know, amazingly, several years ago, the United States was a net importer. And now, because the fracking shell explorations in Texas, mostly the Permian Basin, in the Permian Basin, it's hard to imagine that in the Permian Basin alone is the most prolific oil field, not just in the United States, but literally in the world, of expansion and capacity. Whether it's the Eagleford Shell, which is just slightly west of here, which ends up being a lot more liquid 
and a lot more in, in, in uh, natural gas. And so there's all this potential capacity. Yet one of the things people ask me a lot about is, what do you see is going to happen in the state economy? What is the concern that you have for the state economy? Well, one of my biggest concerns is the talk of international trade. Texas imports and exports more value of product than any other state in our nation. In fact, you'd have to add up the exports out of the state of California, you'd have to add up the exports of the state of Washington, which are number two and three, and you still wouldn't equal the amount of exports that come out of Texas. So the potential and the capacity is significant, and it's very significant to know that as a state, which is very deep in challenges because of the growth, every morning, think about this for the next couple of days while you're here in Houston in my home state, every morning when we wake up in Texas, there's another thousand people that call Texas home. There's roughly another 570 that are born every day in natural growth. There's another 530 people that move to Texas, not just from somewhere around the United States, but they move here literally from around the world. My home county, which I reside in, even though I'm principally based in Austin, I'm in Austin every single week, travel the state. Just west of here is a county called Fort Bend County. And in fact, little known, most people in Texas do not know this. Most people in the United States or the world does not know this, that in fact, Fort Bend County, where I call home, is not just the most ethnically diverse county in Texas, it's the most ethnically diverse county in the entire United States. So you see people moving from all around the world to come here for an economic opportunity, much as my family did in the 1850s for that economic opportunity for hoping of their generation and future generations. And so international trade is extremely important to Texas, extremely important, I think, not just for the United States, but literally for the world. And your industry plays a key role in that, not just from a clean energy, a capacity and expansion. As we were mentioning earlier in the introductions, there is not enough capacity because of the downturn in the oil and gas industry for production off seas, production around the world to meet those needs. Technology is changing drastically. Yet with that being said, there's a severe need to meet those demands into the future. It's amazing to know that between 2012 and 2015, exports from the United States increased almost 260%. It's amazing, 10 years ago, as I was in the state legislature, and even before a lot of discussion was, we were trying to import into this state, import into this country, because we did not have the feedstock and the capacity, yet now we're an exporter and hopefully we'll continue to have those international ties and connections that's not only important for Texas, not only important for the United States, but is important for every single one of your countries. I would ask that you spend a little bit of money while you're here. You know, I uh, talked to my former colleagues and my dear friends in the state legislature and they go into a new legislative session in January and it's amazing. It really doesn't matter whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. We principally have two parties in this country and in this state. It doesn't matter. They all ask, do you have any more money for us today? So I purposely, wherever I go, I have jacket pockets, pants pockets. I never put one thing in my pocket on the right side. As the tax collector, and when anyone asks me, do you have any more money, it's always convenient to pull that pocket out and show them there's not a thing in that pocket. <laughs> now, but you can change that while you're here in Texas. If you all spend just a little bit of money, and the reason I say is because of your sales tax revenues that we have in Texas, that's 58% of all of our tax collections. And give you a couple of numbers just to show the growth of the state economy in part your industry is contributing to this. It's amazing, amazing to know that, that propane G exports is roughly $12 billion a year to our state economy. Think about that. $12 billion is directly attributed to your industry just from the exports alone in this state. And in fact, the industry on the ground whether it's consumers, whether it's residential, businesses, 
is a contribution of $7 billion to our state's GDP and over 13,000 people are employed as a result. So you are making a significant contribution here in Texas and I really just want to say thank you for that very much because I constantly tell my employees our main focus is customer service. We deal with the taxpayers. We deal with permitting. We deal with businesses. And in fact, here in Texas, amazing to know that in the last 12 months, we've had almost 400,000 new jobs created just in this state. In fact, in the last several years, decades, since the downturn of the last global financial crisis in 07, We've had two million jobs creation just in this state, which is roughly a quarter of the nation's job creation here in Texas. And in part, my point being is, I understand and we understand it's not state governments that's creating those jobs. It's men and women like yourself who are out in the world in the business sector that are providing jobs, economic opportunities for many families, and you and the propane business are doing that very much. So I just simply want to say, again, welcome to the United States for the fifth time. I'm glad that you're back here. I'm glad that you're in my home state for the first time. Glad that you were in the town of my birth, of Houston, for the first time, and I'd ask that you come back because your industry really fits in right here in Houston as the energy capital of the world and where you are going to lead not only this state, not only this country, but literally the world and what you're doing in cutting technology. And I just want to say thank you and I'm humbled to be here for, for a few moments to join you today. And I hope that you have a very good conference for the next few days. Please enjoy our humid weather and spend just a little bit of money while you're here. And may God bless you. Thank you very much. Glenn, thank you very much for that speech. Um, amazing statistics about the, state of about the state of Texas and $12 billion of exports in propane. I think that's something for us to, to think deeply about as we go and have a coffee break. Um, please take a coffee in the exhibition. We're going to come back here uh, for a, the first opening roundtable, which will start at quarter past 10. So please get back for that. Uh, see you soon. Thank you. Pois há menos peixinhos a nadar no 